During this lesson, you will see the Autoland sequence from the initial setup through the approach to final landing or go around. During the approach phase of a flight, the crew will normally be under direct control of air traffic control and be provided with radar vectors and descent heights to intercept the final approach course. The aeroplane would normally be set up under the control of a single autopilot, with the auto throttle controlling the mode control panel indicated airspeed. The crew will select the flaps and gear as appropriate to the aircraft during the approach. The autopilot will not select flaps or gear. Altitude hold will maintain the mode control panel height, with heading select controlling the mode control panel heading. From the instrument approach procedure, the crew will obtain the instrument landing system or ILS frequency to set on the VHF navigation radios and the inbound course to set on the mode control panel courses. The other thing to take note of is the radio altitude indication in the bottom right hand corner of both primary flight displays as this triggers some of the changes during the approach. Approach control allows localizer and glide slope signals of an ILS to be coupled to the roll and pitch channels of the autopilot. Selecting the approach button arms the approach mode and this is indicated on the flight mode enunciator by localizer and glide slope being the armed modes in roll and pitch. To engage approach at least one VHF navigation receiver must be tuned and receiving an ILS frequency. The autopilot can then fly the aeroplane down to decision height. The correct course needs to be set on the mode control panel to be able to start the approach to decision height. With both VHF navigation receivers tuned to and receiving an ILS frequency, with the correct courses set on the mode control panel, then a full auto land can be carried out. Any time after approach has been accepted by the autopilot, the second autopilot can be engaged. In this case, autopilot B is the only other autopilot available. This means it is a fail passive system, as you cannot continue with an autoland approach should one of the autopilots fail. The second and or third autopilots are now referred to as offline channels as they are performing all of the same calculations as the first autopilot based on their inputs and are sharing information with one another, cross-checking, to make sure they are in agreement. At this point, however, they are not yet controlling their servo motors, which is signified by the command enunciation remaining on the primary flight display. Localizer capture occurs in a similar fashion to VOR capture. At the point of beam capture, heading select mode is replaced by localizer mode as the engaged mode in roll. Heading select is replaced by localizer on the flight mode enunciator. The aircraft will now turn onto and maintain the center line of the localizer, with the roll channel of the autopilot controlled by localizer deviation signals to follow the localizer beam. As the aircraft approaches the glide slope, the beam is captured in a similar fashion, altitude hold disengages, and glide slope becomes the engaged mode in pitch. The altitude hold enunciation is replaced by glide slope on the flight mode enunciator. The aircraft will now descend on the glide slope while simultaneously following the localizer. It would be normal for the pilot to keep one hand on the control column and follow through with the autopilot, right up to the touchdown. Some aircraft may cause the rudder pedals to be connected in parallel at this time, so that the pilot can also follow through any yaw inputs 
with feet on the pedals. In this fashion, the pilot knows exactly what inputs the autopilot is making to the flight controls. When the aircraft reaches 1500 feet radio altitude, the flight control computer checks that the localizer and glide slope beams are captured. All selected autopilots are now fully engaged, and this is shown by LAN2 or LAN3 being enunciated on the primary flight display. At the same time, the flare mode will be armed in the pitch channel, and if available, rollout will be armed in the roll channel. At 3 to 400 feet radio altitude, the auto trim system stores a nose up trim signal in preparation for flare mode. During the approach from about 1500 feet, the yaw channel will compute the difference between the aeroplane's heading and its actual track across the ground. The runway alignment mode is armed at the same time as the flare mode and engaged at less than 400 feet, dependent on type. At this point, the yaw channel causes the rudder to kick off any drift prior to touchdown, which aligns the aeroplane with the runway centerline. At 50 feet radio altitude, or 45 feet wheel height above the ground, flare mode is engaged, and the glide slope signal is disconnected. The rate of descent is reduced to approximately 2 feet per second. This is achieved by the radio altimeter controlling the flare to reduce the rate of reduction of the radio altitude. At the same time, a signal is sent to the autothrottle system to retard the throttles, so that they are at idle thrust as the aeroplane touches down. There are two reasons for this. Firstly, thrust is no longer required as the aircraft is flaring. Secondly, the thrust levers need to be at idle so that after the touchdown, the pilot can select reverse thrust. The autothrottle will not control the engines in reverse. Next in the sequence is as the aeroplane passes through a gear height of 5 feet or 10 feet radio altitude when the flare mode is disengaged. The aircraft will touch down firmly in the touchdown zone. A firm touchdown is required if the runway is wet to allow the tyres to break through any standing water and make firm contact to avoid the possibility of aquaplaning. The aeroplane then transitions into the touchdown and rollout mode, which causes the nose to be lowered and the speed brakes and auto brake to be applied if selected. When reverse thrust is applied by the crew, the auto throttles disengage. If the aircraft does not have rollout control or guidance as part of the auto land system, the autopilot will be disengaged at this point and the rollout controlled manually. If the aircraft has rollout mode, then either shortly before or at the touchdown point, localizer mode will disengage and rollout will become the engaged mode in roll. Rollout control will now use the localizer deviation signal to feed steering commands into the rudder to keep the aircraft on the center line. There may also be an interconnection between the rudder pedals and the nose wheel steering after the touchdown which will allow a limited authority of the steering. This will allow the aircraft to maintain the center line of the runway even after the airspeed has fallen below the speed at which the rudder is effective. Some aircraft may use a runway guidance system, giving the pilot commands to move the rudder left or right to maintain the center line. With rollout control, the autopilot will remain engaged until the pilot disengages it at some point during the rollout. When the aircraft is in an approach configuration, go around mode is armed. Go around mode can be an auto throttle, flight director, 
or autopilot function. Let us assume, following the autoland approach sequence given before, that at decision height, the pilot decides to go around. This is achieved by pressing the takeoff go around switch, positioned on or near the throttles. When the takeoff go around switch is pressed, all of the autoland functions are disengaged and the autopilot reverts to single autopilot operation. The auto throttle changes from speed to thrust mode. The pitch enunciation is takeoff go around and the roll enunciation is takeoff go around. The throttles move forward to give the required go around thrust. This figure is calculated by the thrust computer and is based on the aircraft achieving a target vertical speed, typically 2,000 feet per minute. Go around thrust is not necessarily full thrust. On some aircraft types, pressing the takeoff go around switch a second time will advance the throttles to full thrust. The pitch channel of the autopilot pitches the aircraft up to achieve the pre-programmed vertical speed. The roll channel of the autopilot maintains the track that existed at the time the takeoff go around switches were pressed. The objective is to fly the aircraft up directly over the runway centerline. Go around is a one button operation to keep the aircraft away from any danger. As the aircraft climbs, the pilot will move the flap from a landing to a takeoff position and select the gear up. The autopilot will not operate the gear or flap. When the aircraft has passed 400 feet above ground level, any roll or pitch function of the autopilot can be engaged. Typically, heading select and vertical speed, or lateral navigation and vertical navigation, if a missed approach procedure is part of the active route. The pilot can then use the autopilot to reposition for another approach at the same airfield or fly to an alternate airfield, whichever is appropriate. During this lesson, you have learnt the selections a crew makes during an autoland approach from approach to localizer and glide slope capture. Then, the radio altitude heights of 1500 feet, 400 feet, 50 feet, 10 feet, and finally, landing and rollout. You also learn the sequence of events when the crew operated the takeoff go around switches.